Good morning. It's great to have you with us here at Flag Church. We are so excited for this morning. I believe that God's got some great things to speak into our hearts. We're going to worship the Lord together. We're going to enter into his presence. We're going to hear from his word. And I believe that God has a life change that's available to every one of us. Whatever we're going through, whatever we're facing, God has a word to speak into our lives today. So I'm so glad that you're with us. I'm believing God for great things. Let's walk into the Lord's presence in worship. Let's enter his gates with thanksgiving. God bless you. This morning we're going to tell the devil not today. He has no grip on us this morning. Today is the day that God created and he is in control. 
Let us pray. Join me wherever you are. Can you lift your voices wherever you are right now? And let's just pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you because today is your day. Because you created this day, Father. You are in control, Lord. Father, where you are, there is hope. Where you are, there is joy. Where you are, there is peace. Where you are, there is light. Father, you came to rescue us. You are with us this morning, Father. And we want to praise you this morning because you are a good God. Where, there, where you are, there is no fear. Father, this morning we want to pray for your presence to sweep through each person's home, wherever they are joining us from. I pray for your peace to flood their hearts, Father. Father, I pray right now for the people that are uh, maybe uh, struggling with a, a need. Maybe it is a health need. Maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it's a spiritual need. Maybe it, uh, whatever that need is, Lord. Father, we pray that you would move right now and bring healing, bring restoration restoration bring freedom in people's homes lord father let there be a peace that passes all understanding that moves through people's homes right now we believe for that and we ask for that in jesus mighty name and all god's people said amen amen hey welcome Welcome. We are glad that you are here this morning at Flag Church. Yes, we are glad that you are here. We want to welcome everyone that is joining us online. And obviously, if you are joining us online, then we would love to have you share that online feed with somebody else. If you're on Instagram, Facebook, if you're watching through YouTube, any of our streams, that you would just share that and let people know that they have a church that is online that they can watch and that they can tune in and experience God's presence. We would love you to do that right now so that we can continue to reach as many people as possible. And while you're doing that, we encourage you to uh, go to our Flag Church app, fill out a connection card, and also if you have a prayer request, you can also fill out that prayer request so that people can be praying for you throughout the Christmas season today. And you can put those prayer requests even in the chat wherever you are, whether that be on our website or Facebook, there is a team that is there and every other person that is watching with you online can also be praying with you. So we encourage you to do that this morning. Yes, and also talking about today, we are excited for this evening as we get to celebrate Christmas at Flag. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. We want you to join us online at 5 p.m. as we come to you. Uh, we've got some amazing Christmas music. There's going to be a, a connection time for your kids, so we ask your kids to join us. We also talked about how we're going to be celebrating communion, and we're going to be having the candlelight service, so we hope that you will be prepared for that. But it's going to be a powerful evening, 5 p.m. this evening. We hope that you will join us as we celebrate Christmas at Flag. Yeah, we're celebrating Christmas today, and we're also celebrating Jesus. We're celebrating what he has done in our life, what he has done in your life, what he has done in Flag, and everything is made possible through God. And we just have the opportunity to partner with him in reaching people and in, in pushing in pushing his gospel forward. And uh, so today we have that opportunity to invest into the kingdom of God, whether that be through our Flag Church app, through text to give online. We encourage you this morning as we give to bless the Lord and pray that this season that God would use everything that you give to spread his name to someone else. That this morning as you give, be intentional about it and say, Jesus, as I give to you this morning, I pray that you would take this offering and I pray that you would worship. I pray that it would worship you and bring honor and glory to your name, that someone would come to know who you are through my giving. So we encourage you through our many different platforms uh, today to honor the Lord in your giving uh, so that we can see his kingdom push forward. Talking about giving, man, this is the season of giving. It started by God sending his son as a gift to us. And so we want to celebrate the season of giving. And we um, have been doing that in many ways, thanks to God's favor, thanks to God's provision, thanks to God opening up doors. But this morning, we want to give God thanks, and we want to give you thanks for partnering with us so that we could be a church that has uh, celebrated a season of giving. And so uh, starting off, we started with Thanksgiving, where we gave out Thanksgiving baskets to our West Side community families. We gave out about 150 
150 uh, Thanksgiving boxes and got to bless families. And this past Thursday, we got to bless our flag families. 25 flag, flag families were blessed because of your giving and God's uh, favor and your generosity. And then this past Friday, we got to bless more West Side and Medlock families. We gave out close to 150 boxes. It was so amazing to just love on our community. And guess what? This coming Wednesday, we get to do that again for West Side and Medlock. We give out another 150 boxes. So this has been an amazing season of giving. And then we were also able, as we were doing the shoe giveaway, that we were able to provide 247 pairs of shoes. And uh, Kelsey Bulware, one of our uh, principals, was telling us uh, at our outreach at Westside Elementary that uh, there were kids that were so excited that they were receiving a pair of shoes. And there were even kids that were saying, man, I'm so excited because this is the first box of shoes that I've ever had like that have ever gotten a fresh pair of shoes in a box. It was their first pair, and we were able to partner with them and bless kids this Christmas with a new pair of shoes. And we just want to thank you guys for making it possible to bless our community this Christmas. Yes, thank you for giving to us the shoes. But we also know that, man, our teachers in our USD 250 school district, they have gone above and beyond this year. They have sacrificed in many ways, and they have given so that they could invest into our kids. And so we wanted to invest in them. And so this past week, we were able to give out close to 700 of these cards to every USD 250 employee just to say, you know what, thank you. Thank you for what you do day in and day out. And on us, celebrate or go have a, a drink at Signet or at Sonic. And we were able to do that because of your generosity. And we want to thank you for that. But this morning, Flag Church, we want to celebrate you. We want to give you a gift. Pastor Tom uh, kind of gave you a little insight last week that we were going to give you a very special Christmas gift. And this morning, we are excited to give you this gift. We believe that this gift is going to transform your life. We believe that this is going to help you in your relationship with Jesus Christ. That it's going to strengthen your, your, your growth with Jesus. It's going to be a discipleship tool that you get to have uh, for your own. And it's uh, Right Now Media. I hope you're celebrating wherever you are. Many of you may have heard of this. Many of you may have already used it. But Right Now Media, you have your very own copy of Right Now Media that you get to use. And let me tell you a little bit about Right Now Media. This is for your kids. Kids, if you are joining us right now, guess what? There is a section just for you where you get to spend time learning about Jesus and all of the amazing stories in the Bible. Teenagers, there is there's content for you to grow in discipleship. Uh, young adults, there's content for you. Mom and dads, there's content for you, for the whole family. Uh, Financial Peace University. Life groups, there's content for you. Conferences, there's tools that will help you grow in leadership. All of this packaged into Right Now Media. Now, there's two ways that you can access it. Right now on the screen, you're going to see a slide with a QR code. If you pull out your phone and use your camera and scan that, you're going to get access to be able to visit their website and register for a copy. Or this afternoon at noon, you should receive an email with a link giving you access to Right Now Media. So we want to say Merry Christmas. We hope you enjoy this gift from Flag Church. And we're going to show you a short video right now unpacking Right Now Media. Thank you. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right now, media, it's for groups, it's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. 
This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. <laughs> and now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically based videos. Get equipped, get inspired. We're so excited to be able to offer Right Now Media to you in, uh, in your home and uh, on your uh, device, however you'd like to access it. Uh, and I want to just, uh, as we begin, uh, kind of echoing what Pastor Anthony has been sharing about uh, Right Now Media, I just want to uh, say a, a, a big thank you to our board for their forward vision in making this available. And also, I want to just uh, give a shout out to the Kansas ministry network with the Assemblies of God. Uh, they've helped us to do this uh, with a generous uh, offer to all of us as credentialed ministers and all of our churches. So we got this at a reduced rate because we're part of that network and just want to say a big thank you to them. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear reports back from you as to how you're able to use Right Now Media. I th already this morning have been using it uh, looking at some information for boards and uh, leadership teams in churches and tremendous, tremendous information. So uh, take advantage of it and uh, enjoy Right Now Media. Also, I just wanted to, to uh, remind you this morning is our special Christmas missions offering. And if you have your device with you and, and you'd like to head out to our app, you can give on our app. Just click on uh, giving and then click on the missions offering or the Christmas offering. I'm sorry, the Christmas offering. And we'll make sure that that money is applied to our missionaries. We support uh, 26 different missionaries currently uh, that are part of the Assemblies of God. And then in addition to that, we have another uh, three or four that we support on a monthly basis. And in order to do that, we need missions giving. And you've been so faithful in, in that support. We want to make sure in 2021, which is just around the corner, that we'll be able to continue with that monthly support for those missionaries. Just this morning, uh, Lori and I heard from some missionary friends. They're not missionaries that we're supporting currently, but they're old friends we pastored together in uh, nearby towns uh, years ago, and they're on the mission field in Botswana. And I don't know whether you can imagine with me, but uh, this morning, uh, actually in the middle of the night, they were awakened by what they said was a loud rumbling that lasted for about, sounded like an explosion for about five seconds. What they discovered when they got out of bed was that they had, in Botswana, had experienced uh, an earthquake. And, you know, that would be unsettling here in the United States in terrain and culture that we understand. But how much more frightening would that be to be on the mission field? So many of our missionaries are experiencing situations like that. And not only do they experience those in a different culture, but then they run toward those situations to try to bring help and relief to those who have been affected. Your giving enables them to do that. And I just want to say thank you in advance for your gift to our Christmas missions offering. Thanks so much. Our missionaries appreciate it so much. God bless you. Hey, let's turn to the scripture this morning. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 8, we, we read again this familiar Christmas story, but it's so good to read it over and over and over again and, and, and to experience and enter into that experience of that first Christmas. But we pick it up in Luke chapter 2 and verse 8, where we read, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, 
has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that your word is powerful, that when your word is empowered by your Holy Spirit, it brings life into our lives. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to, to read this text again for the first time, that somehow your Holy Spirit would make it new and make it fresh and help us to see it with fresh eyes and help us to make real application to our lives during this Christmas season. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, 2020, which is almost over, somebody say praise the Lord, 2020, which is almost over, has introduced us to all kinds of new fears. With all the uncertainty surrounding COVID-19, we've experienced fears that you and I have never imagined. But we may not have experienced some of these unusual fears that I want to uh, uh, bring to your attention this morning. Uh, have you ever heard of the fear, the phobia of electorophobia? Electorophobia. It's the fear of chickens. Never, never heard of it before. Or onomatophobia? It's the fear of names. I don't even know how that works, but it's the, the fear of names. Or paganophobia, which is the fear of beards which when Pastor Eli is around, I have to admit, it's a little scary. Uh, uh, neophobia, the fear of, or I'm sorry, nephophobia, which is the fear of clouds. I don't, can't even imagine what that life would be like. Or cryophobia, which is why Lori and I are in Kansas and not in Iowa anymore. It's the fear of ice or cold. <laughs> what the shepherds had on that night was angelophobia. It's a real thing. It's a fear of angels, which experts say is related to uranophobia, which is the fear of heaven. <laughs> All those are kind of humorous, but, but you know, fear of angels makes perfect sense to me. I can't imagine the experience of the shepherds when the angels visited them on that hillside that night. Usually, when an angel appears in scripture, their first statement is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And that's what the angel said to the shepherds. Don't be afraid. And for good reason. You know, angels are far mightier and more ominous than our art typically portrays them. Angels are fearsome beings. And I'm sure the shepherds experienced what, or may have experienced what Isaiah experienced some 750 years earlier. In Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5, Isaiah was in the temple and he had an experience with the Lord. And this is what he said. Then I said, when he saw the Lord in the temple, he said, then I said, it's all over. I'm doomed. For I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I've seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. I'm sure the angels on that first night had to reassure the shepherds that they would just that they would even survive the experience. But I think there was a larger message when when the angels said, "Don't be afraid." I, I think they were saying something more than what was merely the the immediate fear and and uh, uh, the experience of the shepherds shepherds being terrified. I think the angel was also speaking to this cumulative fear of all mankind. That the angel was saying, hey, I've got, a, I've got a remedy for all the fears, all the anxieties, all the phobias of all mankind in all of history. I have a remedy to fear. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 10, we read it. The angel said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. God has come to live with men. And it's the ultimate remedy to all fear. God with us. Maybe you had the same experience that I did as a little boy. I was convinced that my dad 
could handle anything. <laughs> when he was around, I was not afraid. I remember even waking up at night with nighttime fears or having had a nightmare or a bad dream. And Dad was available, and he could, he could convince me that everything would be okay. Even when I was being disciplined by him, I knew I was okay if Dad was the one who was doing the disciplining. That's one of the things that I think God wanted to commu communicate to us by sending Jesus. That he was with us and that everything would be okay. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, part of the Christmas story, the angel says, look, the virgin will conceive and a child and she will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The angel that visited Joseph was telling him to take Mary as his wife, and, and he was actually quoting the prophet Isaiah. Back in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, the prophet wrote and said, all right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She'll give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Here, 750 years before the time of Jesus, God was speaking through the prophet Isaiah and prophesying, telling us that Jesus, Emmanuel, was going to come. God wants us to know that he has come to live among us and we don't need to fear. Somebody this morning needs to hear that word. Jesus' disciples didn't understand it fully. Even, even at the end of Jesus' earthly life, the disciples really didn't understand exactly what Jesus was doing here and, and what he was trying to communicate. In fact, toward the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, he was telling his disciples that he'd be crucified and that he would rise again. In the midst of that conversation, as he said, as he told them that he would come to receive them back to himself, Philip said, we don't know the way. We don't know where you're going. How can we possibly know the way to, to experience you again, to experience your presence after you've left us? And, and Philip, finally, kind of in his frustration and in, his, in, in, in some anxiety and in his confusion, Philip said, Jesus, if you'll just show us the Father, if you'll just show us the Father, then that will be enough. And in the midst of that conversation, in John chapter 14 and verse 9, Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am. Watch how Jesus defines who he is here. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? What Jesus is saying is, Philip, you, you want to see your heavenly father? Look at me. Look at me because I am God. I am God represented in the flesh before you. You know, some of us errantly see God the father as this judge who wants to wipe us out. And, and we see Jesus in, in relation to the Father as, as our friend coming alongside and trying to convince our Heavenly Father that he shouldn't take his wrath out on us. But Jesus is saying that's not the picture that we need to have of God. It's not the picture that we need to have of Jesus. But Jesus is saying the Father and I are unified. And, and you and I are loved by our Father in heaven so much that he sent Jesus into the world to show us <clears throat> exactly who he is. Subsequent to that, he sent us his Holy Spirit to actually live inside of us. Why is he doing that? because he's reaching out to you and to me to establish a relationship. Some of you have experienced that you've invited a friend to church or, or maybe you're someone who's been invited to church by a friend and, 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 and uh, for some of us, 
people living in our culture, our experience of the church hasn't been that good. Some people say, you know, I'd rather go visit the dentist than go to church. <laughs> I'd rather go have my appendix out than, than head into that building or be part of the... But listen to me. If you've, been, if you've been disappointed by the church, don't allow that disappointment to keep you from God. Somebody said, I, I don't want to go to church with hypocrites. Well, all of us are hypocrites in one form or another. And the church isn't a group of perfect people. The church is a group of people who are on a journey we're trying to, seeking to grow in our faith in Christ and have our lives transformed. It's interesting. So often the church falls short in representing who God is, but Jesus doesn't. Why? Because he, in fact, is God. And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen my heavenly Father. Let Jesus be the representation of God in your life. You can turn to him, and, and the message of Christmas is that he's available. And because he's with us, his help is always available. Because he's with us, because Jesus came in the flesh, he understands temptation. He understands what it is to overcome temptation. Because he was a perfect sacrifice, his help is always always available to us. I love the way the psalmist said in Psalm 23 and verse 4, even though I walk through the valley, the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Maybe you've heard this or memorized it in the King James Version, Psalm 23 and verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, here it is, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen, I, I don't know what difficulty you're experiencing. I don't know what trauma you're in right now. I don't know how COVID has affected you. I don't know about your financial challenges. I don't know about your physical challenges. I don't know what you're experiencing. Only, only you and God really know that. Although I don't know what you're experiencing, this is one thing that I do know. And I've experienced it in my own life. That God is available. God is available to walk through whatever you're experiencing with you. He's available to comfort you. You know, sometimes we can be tempted to falter in our faith when difficulties come. I've heard it more than once this year, people saying, I, I, I just don't know where to turn. I'm, I'm losing my faith. I'm thinking about turning away. I'm so disappointed. I'm thinking about turning away from my faith. And you know what happened with Jesus followers when things began to heat up in Jesus' ministry? There are many people, the Bible records it, many people that left Jesus and in the process of that, Jesus turned to his disciples and he, he asked them if they wanted to leave him also. In John chapter 6 and verse 68, Peter, who was the disciple who just seemed like he was always ready to say something, and he got it right this time. Peter replied after Jesus had said, do you, do you want to leave me also? Others have left. Do you want to leave also? Peter replied and said, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. I want to encourage you today. God is available to walk through your adversity with you. He's ready and available to walk through your difficulty with you. I want to encourage you today to allow the difficulty to drive you toward God rather than away from him. Allow the difficulty, allow whatever you're going through to push you toward God rather than away from him. Because Emmanuel means that he's available to walk through your situation with you. Also, not only is God available to help us always, but he's also available to 
help us to take on new challenges. He's not just available to comfort us, but he's available to help us to take on the next challenge. I love this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. This may not sound like a Christmas verse, but stay with me. For uh, Paul says, for though we walk in the flesh, though we live in these bodies, we don't wage battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We're destroying arguments and all arrogance raised against the knowledge of God, and we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Listen, you may be right now locked in a spiritual battle. You may be facing an addiction. You might be fighting to keep your family together. You may have been called to do something that you know is beyond your ability. I want to camp out here for just a minute. Some of you are facing things that you're saying, I'm not able to handle this. And you know, there are some who have taught that God will never give us something that we can't handle. I want you to know this morning, that's not in the Bible. The Bible says that God will always give us a way to overcome temptation. But the Bible doesn't say that, that God will only give us things that we can handle. Let me read the verse to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation, Paul writes, has overtaken you except something common to mankind. And God is faithful, so he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. Listen, God always gives us a way of escape so that we can endure temptation. That's God's promise to us. Which is also one of the ways that, that he's Emmanuel with us. It, it's one of the blessings of God being with us, that he, he helps us when we're tempted. We can never say, you know, I was tempted and I just couldn't help myself because God promises that he always gives us a way out of temptation, a way that we can endure it. But watch this, God often gives us things that we're not able to handle. It's throughout the scripture. In fact, it's rare that somebody gets a miracle without a problem in front of it. It's rare that God works in someone's life when we can handle it all. Listen, God gives people things they can't handle. God lets things come into our lives. He, it, it, watch this. In, in Genesis, God gave Moses this calling to part the Red Sea. Moses didn't have that ability. Did God give him something he couldn't handle? You bet he did. He called Joshua to stop the flow of the Jordan River. He gave him specific instructions. The instructions were send the 12 priests into uh, uh, the Jordan River, and when they step in, the waters are going to stop. They're, they're going to stop flowing. Can you imagine those priests as they were stepping in? But isn't that the way God works? God called David to slay Goliath. Did David have that ability? I don't think so. He called his disciples to preach the gospel to the entire world. <laughs> and if you're listening and watching this morning, God will call you to do something that you can't do. Maybe you're facing one of those situations right now. You're saying, God, I, I can't do this. I can't do what you're calling me to do. Listen to me. If that's your situation this morning, Emmanuel, God with us, the story of Christmas means that God is here to help us fight our battles. God is here with us so that we can do more than we can do. Maybe today, if, if you were asked to define your life, the word that you would use would be overwhelmed. I want you to know this morning, you are in very good company. Because throughout the scripture, we see the overwhelmed, we see the challenged, we see the, the, the disabled, we see the unable. 
doing things that they couldn't do in their own strength. Why? Because God was with them. So let me ask you the question this morning. What's God calling you to do right now? He might be calling you to change a bad habit. He might be calling you to start a new ministry. Maybe he's calling you to restore a relationship. Or he's calling you to read through the New Testament or, or to, a, to establish a habit of prayer. Maybe he wants you to start a new business. Maybe you're looking at all of these things and, and you're saying, uh, whatever it is, I don't have the ability to do that. But Emmanuel, Emmanuel means that God is with you to help you. Are you facing something today that seems impossible? God with us says it's possible. Maybe you're facing something right now that seems unbearable. God with us means that we can be comforted. That's one of the things that God wants to communicate to us this Christmas. You may be walking through a difficult time right now. Maybe, like me, you've lost a loved one this year. Christmas looks different this year. Emmanuel means that God's with you to comfort you. You may be looking at a challenge in 2021, and you feel like that challenge is unsurmountable, insurmountable. Emmanuel means that God is able to do in you and through you more than you can do. I have to tell you, this Christmas I am so grateful for Jesus, so grateful for God with us. So maybe you're walking through a difficult time, maybe you're facing a challenging time. The Christmas message for you and for me is Emmanuel. God with us. The Christmas message really is as the angels reassured the shepherds that night don't be afraid I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people the Savior Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Would you pray with me? Wherever you are, I'm, I'm just going to ask you. I, I know it's tempting when we're online and we're just doing this digitally. I know it's tempting to to turn away and say, well, this is the, the prayer time, but uh, uh, let's believe God together in this moment of time. I believe that when we pray, something happens in the heavens. I want to invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, I, I pray for my friends who are watching online today. I pray, Lord, for, for those who are experiencing difficulties today. Lord, that in this moment of time, they would experience, we would experience the comfort of your Holy Spirit. The comfort of God with us. And that that comfort would change everything. It would change the way that we see things. God, that you'd give us wisdom. You'd give us a heavenly perspective. 
And Lord, that it would, that God with us, that Emmanuel would heal that spot in our hearts that's broken, that's empty, that needs a fresh touch, that only you can fill up. Lord, I pray for my friends who are facing challenges. I pray especially, Lord, for those who are facing habits or addictions that that it seems like have just racked and ruined their lives. God, I pray that you would grant strength for others, Lord, who are facing challenges, maybe in their family lives, maybe uh, in, in their businesses, wherever, however, whatever it is, God, I pray, Lord, that those challenges would be met and surpassed by the power that works mightily in us. God, we believe you for miracles. And I pray, Lord, today that you would release miracles into the lives of your people because God is with us. God is coming alongside us. We are able to do what we cannot do. As the Old Testament says, we're able to run through a troop and jump over a wall. Things that we can't do in our own strength, Lord, you're able to do. While we're praying, while your head is bowed, I wonder if there are some who are watching, who are listening today, who are saying, you know what, Tom, I'm, I'm away from God. I'm not sure about my relationship with him. I'm not sure that if something happened to me today that what my eternal destiny would be. But I want to know that. I, I, I want to pray for you today because that issue can be resolved today. Would you pray this prayer with me? And and if if you're desirous of of starting a new relationship with God through Christ, or you're desiring to come back to that relationship with your Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, through his sacrificial death on the cross, paying the penalty for our sin that we couldn't pay, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I turn away from my sin and I turn toward you. I give you all of my life, all that I am, all that I have, all that I hope to be. I'm yours. I thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for changing me. Thank you for coming into my life in the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for being God with me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Let's continue to worship the Lord this morning.
continue in worship and we're going to sing about the savior of the world and sing about his glory this morning he sent his son down for us world waits for a miracle heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel A child prays for peace on earth And she's calling out from a sea of her Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel And can you hear the angel Baby's cry is the sound of a love come down, come down, Emmanuel. Sing glory.
little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel this morning as we close out I challenge you at some point as Pastor Tom was just referencing of just how thankful he was for Jesus this Christmas season let's be sure today that whether it be in a personal time, personal moment with the Lord, whether it be an extended period of time or just a small moment that we would pause and we would just say, Jesus, I am thankful for you. I am thankful that you came down to this earth, that you paid the price for me so that I could experience life, that I could have eternal life with you. And let's be sincere about that today that we don't take it for granted, but that we would challenge ourselves to truly pause, to truly think, to reflect on our life, to reflect on where we are, and to say this morning, Jesus, I am thankful for you. I am thankful for, the, for everything that you've done for me, Jesus. I have every reason to be thankful this Christmas season because I have you. And let's just be joyful this Christmas season Let's be thankful this Christmas season because God is good. He sees us where we're at and he loves us and he gives us a reason to be joyful. So let's pray this morning. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you've given to us, for everything that you've blessed us with, Father, when we were deserving and when we were not. Father, you blessed us anyhow. You've blessed us again and again, Father, because you want to bless us, because you love us, because you care for us, because you want the best for us, Father. And you are a God that is with us. You are a God that is with us, Emmanuel. Always, in every season, whether it be good or bad, you are with us, you are there, you are near because you love us, Father. Let us remember that this season. Let us give honor and thanksgiving to you, Jesus, because of how good you are. Let us love you back, Father. Let us shine that light to the world. Let us show everyone how great you are, how mighty you are, how wonderful you are. And let us bless you and bless others, Jesus. You are so good. You are so great. I pray a blessing upon every person that is going to watch this feed, Father, whether they're watching it now or they'll watch our second service or they'll watch it throughout the week, Father. Whenever their eyes come across it, Father, that your heart and your love would be communicated to them, Jesus, that they would know, Father, that you are Emmanuel, that you are with them. Father, we love you. We celebrate you. We celebrate the fact that we can do this today, that we can have church today. We thank you for every life that is changed because of you. We love you and we ask this in your name. Amen. We love you guys. Praying that you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Be sure to share this on your feed so that somebody else can come in contact with it. And don't forget to join us tonight for our 5 o'clock Christmas uh, service. We love you guys and we will see you then. We're so excited that you guys decided to join us today, praying that Jesus has done amazing things.